Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and a couple days back Tiled 1.3 was released and today we're going to take a look at what is in that particular release but first we're going to start with a bit of an overview of what Tiled is all about and this one is an open source map editor and if you're working with a framework something like libgdx, sfml, sdl, um, something along those lines or a game engine that doesn't have its own level creation tool you're probably going to want to check out Tiled and there's something in this update that makes this version so much more useful. I'm going to tease you there first. First, we're going to actually jump in and take a look at Tiled itself. Here is where you can grab it. It's mapeditor.org. We will come back to this. I just want to show you Tiled first. Here is Tiled. It is a um, map editor built with Qt, open source C++ framework, available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The code is available. GPL, we will get back to that in a moment. And as you can see, it is for creating maps out of tile. Just the name, thus the name. Although truth of the matter is, the name is a little misleading. When this started out, this was for making tile-based maps. And it doesn't have to be um, orthogonal tiles. You can have perspectives like so. Uh, you can have it be orthogonal. You can have it be isometric. Um, so it's for making various different kinds of maps. And you have multiple different layers of tiles. And you basically just drop in and paint. But you can also have have um, zones in there, things that your game engine hooks up with. You could have uh, special properties, so you could say that this particular ones that are painted in this color are lava and cause you damage, and you can hook your code up to deal with that. You can have polygonal shapes in there, so if you want to have collision maps, or as you can see here, you can have paths. So if you want to define the pathing that your guard takes to go within your level, that kind of stuff is available here too. So essentially, you can use this as a world creation tool. On top of that, you actually have a bunch of power as well. Well, we've got two different kinds of very advanced tiles that you can use. So you can have multiple different layers. So we can have a, you know, a props layer, a ground layer, um, a cloud layer. Or we can have um, uh, various different pieces, of many different layers all hooked up together. And then we've got our, our trainer tile sets to work together. And you've got two kinds. You've got Wang sets. And then you've got, uh, what are the smart ones called? I forget the name offhand. But what you can do is you'll notice that I've got a background here layer of um, dirt in the background to make our desert. But then I can drop in a brick layer on top. And you'll notice as the brick encroaches on the desert, it automatically adapts to the corners. Well, watch this. When I butt into another set of tiles, it's smart enough to know how those tiles actually interact. And... Um, it, it warps or creates itself accordingly. So then if I draw a cobblestone and I bring the cobblestone back out, we push out and interact with our environment accordingly and everything draws off the way it is. So for example, if you had water tiles, uh, you could have it when it interacts with the, the land, you get like a shore, um, a shore tile as a direct result. So once you've set all of these things up, you can then quickly create levels basically just by painting them. But that's not really it. On top of that, we've got, you know, again, shapes that we can be drawn on top of. We can actually just bring in um, sprites. So if we had a parallax background, for example, for clouds, we could drop in an entire sprite layer to have, you know, our clouds going in the background. And then we could delete things out of here. At the same time, we've got properties for all of our tiles. Um, so when you've got an individual tile selected, uh, you can come over here and set uh, details with it that will be then uh, exported out to your game engine. So you can have a tile for, say, a door that triggers uh, an event in your scene or that it has hit points or whatever. You can define those custom properties here and then deal with that in your database side of things. You also notice down here, this one is new. We now have an issues warning label. Uh, so this is part of the new 1.3 release. This isn't the major groundbreaking new feature, by the way, but it is definitely nice to have. And another nice new feature in this particular release, especially if this is your, you know, the heart and soul of where you're actually creating your game. Um, there is now the ability to go into preferences and go into keyboard and you can set up full keyboard shortcuts. So you can have your own keyboard shortcuts, you can export them out, you can reset back to normal and you can import in someone else's. So that is definitely a nice new feature. But the big one is this guy right here. So we now have the ability to provide plugins to it. Uh, it's actually... I'll get back to the readme. So this isn't where I want to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you in the actual release notes. So that is a very, very quick and dirty look at um, Tiled. Uh, very powerful thing. And if you need something for your 2D game engine, especially if you're working with a framework that doesn't provide these kind of tools, there is a Tiled loader for every single game framework you can think of out there. All right, so let's head on back over to the Tiled homepage. So once again, you can grab this at mapeditor.com. ORG. I will link that in the linked article down below. I've also done a tutorial on this. We'll get to that in just a moment. So if you want to get up and going, I've got you fully covered there. So that's why I kind of glossed over a bunch of things in that quick hands-on demonstration. Uh, I do, before I move on, though, have to say, I have no idea how to read this. 
Like, where is the progression? Or is this where we've progressed to already? This is where individual funding is coming from? I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. If you want to go ahead and grab it, it is available here. As I mentioned earlier on, you can download it for a number of different platforms. It is available on itch.io. When you want to grab it, just go on into download now. You can do a donation or you can just say, nope. Just bring me to the downloads. And then you will see here you have downloads available. There's an installer for Windows. There's one for Mac OS. And then there is a Linux version as well. And you can see they are all very much up to date. So that is where you can grab Tiled. On top of that, as I mentioned earlier on, this is an open source product. You can build it from source. The source code itself is in C++ and uses the Qt framework for UI layer and data objects and so on and so forth. And you've got full instructions on how to go about building it for the various different platforms. Now, now the licensing, it's pretty much GPL, but there's a couple ways to look at this. So we'll view the licenses and you'll notice Tiled itself is under GPL. The Tiled plugins are under GPL. And then the lib version that you can link into your uh, game engine. So if you write your own game engine and you want to import Tiled, or if you're doing so in Java or uh, various, uh, those are all under BSD2. That means you can use those and you don't have to open up your source code. Whereas this GPL license basically says if you make changes to um, Tiled, you need to make those changes available publicly in source form. Uh, so again, I sometimes harp on GPL, but I only do it when it's uh, frameworks or game engines. So they've done that little nice thing here. From a tool perspective, GPL makes a lot of sense. From a code perspective, it makes very little sense, which is why they've released that under the much more liberal BSD2 license. And I like this, this combination. This makes it so that anyone uh, deriving from Tiled, everyone else has to benefit from those changes as well. Whereas you can use it unchanged in your code project. Whereas if this stuff was GPL, it would render tiled borderline useless or you would have to white room uh, recreate the tiled importers yourself. And on that topic, once again, uh, Phaser has a tiled import, libjdx has a tiled import, SDL has a tiled import, SFML has a tiled import, uh, Godot has a tiled import, Unity has a tiled import. So if you want to use tiled with another game engine, I guarantee you there is, actually I won't guarantee it, but there is very, very likely a uh, importer for it. So, all right, so now we're gonna get to the specifics of the 1.3-ness of the release. And the biggest thing that I wanna talk about, so this is where I, I was at plugins. I wasn't actually meaning to be at plugins. Instead, we were at extensions. And this is brilliant. This is something that is long overdue. Uh, so right now, if you wanted to change tiled, you had to jump into the C++ code. But tiled is like, 80% of a game level creator. And, and instead of exporting stuff out to your game and then doing stuff on top, wouldn't it be nice to be able to add your AI logic directly inside of Tiled? Or you know, if you wanted to define NPCs or game objects or entities and so on. Well, Tiled does what you need for maps, but not for like inventory or dialogues and so on. So if you wanted to extend Tiled, well, right now you'd have to go into C++. Well, this makes Tiled a very effective um, outline or skeleton of a full-blown game engine without requiring you to go down to that C++ layer. So now there is a JavaScript API. Script API is available documented right here, which allows you to extend the functionality of Tiled with JavaScript. Scripts can commit custom actions, uh, custom editing tools, and add support for additional maps or tile set formats. Almost everything that can be modified via the UI can be changed via script. So you want to use scripts just for straight tools, you know, uh, a big find and replace or that kind of stuff. You can do that as well. So scripts can also connect to certain events to automate actions, for example, on loading or saving of an asset. So if you want to do some data scrubbing, for example, you can do it that way as well. Any changes made by scripts automatically create appropriate undo commands. So the undo and redo stuff built into Tiled will be supported by script, uh, which can be grouped together using the asset.macro function. Uh, scripts can be grouped in folders to make it easier to share them with others, for example, by cloning a Git repository into the extensions folder. Tiled automatically reloads the scripts when it detects a change to any loaded script file. So you can actually uh, build your scripts and test them on the fly, make changes, and Tiled will automatically re reload them. This is a huge difference. Basically, like I said, it turns Tiled, it gives it the potential to be a full-blown level editor, and it makes it a lot easier for a URI without having to jump into the underlying C++ code to add that kind of functionality. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there's also the issues view. So this is if something is broken in your map or whatever, the arrows will be spit out into the issues view. Actually, in my example, uh, I did have an issue. The TLS initialization failed. Got no idea what that means, but yeah, something happened. Uh, so they are all now located in the issues view. Uh, we saw very briefly, there is now the ability to define import and export keyboard shortcuts. Uh, a new update notification. This is when tiled itself is uh, a new version is released, you can have it automatically check it. If you don't want, you can turn this off in preferences, which is basically what I do. I really hate 
automatic updates. Uh, but I understand why people love them, and I love the fact that they have it, the ability to remove it. Plus, as you saw there, you can also go in here, in here, and oh, oh, here. Normally, you could check for updates, but for some reason, there an error is occurring. So maybe it's a side effect of the brand new release. Who knows? Or maybe it's got something to do with that TLS error that I got otherwise. Uh, and then we've got a number of other improvements in here. Um, hard to summarize. So new option to display tiled collision shapes on the map. You can now switch layers by control clicking the map view. Dynamic wrapping mode was added to tile set view. TMX rasterizer uh, learned how to render entire worlds. The last export parameters are now remembered. An export can automatically be triggered when saving. And then we've got full-blown change of everything else that happened. And then in 1.4 on the roadmap, we have project supports dropped from tiled 1.3. So I think this is kind of going into a little bit of what I'm talking about here, uh, about turning this into a full-blown editor um, and connecting objects. I'm not really sure what either of these mean. You can drill down for more details. This goes beyond the scope of what I wanna cover in this video anyways. So that is the open source tiled editor. Now, if you're interested again in learning more about tiled, back in about 1.1, I think it was, I did a full tutorial series linked over in Game From Scratch. I will link this in the, the link down below in the linked article down below. And you will see here, it's split into six different sections, basics, terrain, auto map, um, auto um, object layers and integration with code, uh, tiled without tiles. So this is like the whole, you don't need to use it for tile map. It could just be large sprites and laying them out using the map editor. And then finally, I have one here on using isometric maps. By the way, auto map is the name that I was looking for. Uh, the, the ability to have the, the tiles interact with each other. So the, the, the coast and the desert, uh, how they automatically dealt with each other, that's called auto mapping. Although, there is the fun named Wang tile sets that also do something very, very similar, uh, but that's an algorithm behind it. And I'm not getting into Wang, tile, Wang tiles in this video. In fact, I am done this video. So if you wanna check out that whole tutorial series, it's entirely video based. So I walk you through all of what you need to know to get to use tile uh, minus the last say two-ish versions, in which case you're on your own. Now, if there is enough demand, I can do an updated tile tutorial. I got most of the bases covered, so that's why I really haven't. But let me know if you guys wanna cover a little bit more. Uh, maybe I'll get a little bit into that scripting stuff because I actually do think that is potentially a big deal. So you can use tiled as a full fat game editor, customize it to your needs. And, and that does make it a lot more powerful in my opinion. Anyways, that is tiled. Let me know what you think. Have you used it or do you use something else other than, you know, the, the level editing tools built into your game engine of choice? Um, and let me know what you think of this update, the new JavaScript API and everything else. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.